Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Glory be to God. You are welcome to today's edition of Let's Talk. Let's Talk 151. Count the cost, part 13. It's been an amazing time in God's presence, learning at His feet. So I've been discussing the cost of discipleship. So today we're going to continue the series. And I believe that as you watch, as you listen, uh, God's blessings will manifest in your life in Jesus' name. Amen. In Christ, you are blessed already. But thank God, we also want to experience the manifestations of His blessings. Uh, and as you spend time at His feet, that is guaranteed. So you are welcome to this edition. Let's talk. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Okay. Okay. Let's talk 151, part 13. Count the cost, which is another kingdom principle. So, count the cost is a term used by Jesus in Luke 14, 25 to 35. Yeah. Are we going to be reading it again today? Or oh, we should? Maybe yeah. people should. So please, please, please read through that scripture, okay. Luke 14, 25 to 35. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So we are looking at one of the verses there that talks about counting the cost before we start building a tower, before we even go to war and all that. that that's the context of that particular story. So we are just looking at the fact that it means that before starting a project or a life endeavor or a goal, one needs to consider all the costs, be it money cost, the strength cost, the time cost, the health cost, the manpower cost, the knowledge cost, the eternal cost. There are so many costs that one has to look at before building something. So even if we set a goal, we need to look at the cost of what we want to do before even we, before we even start it. So that there is a sure possibility of completing that project before it even commences. Those who do not count the cost before embarking on a project stand the possibility of failing to complete the project. And can also become a laughing stock as mm. Jesus Christ said that oh, yes. men will go and pass that particular project and will be mocking mm. the person. Mm. That look at this person. He started to build and he doesn't have enough to complete that project. Mm. So in order to avoid being a laughing stock that we are supposed to sit down, consider, take our time to count the cost of what we want to do. So that we have the success rate mm. of fulfilling it. At least how many, how much? 90... Next to like you know, next to like five percent uh -huh. of fulfilling that particular project or goal. So we have to prepare adequately before we start the project. So please know that count the cost can be used in making other decisions in life apart from the count the cost that we have here concerning discipleship that we should count the cost before we start or before we become a disciple. So that we are adequately prepared to fulfill our mission as a disciple. So there are decisions that we can make that are not even about discipleship. That we can use that particular principle so that we can make better decisions. E.g., for example, when it comes to relationships, maybe you want to pursue a particular life partner, you have to look at the cost. It's not only money cost, because there is so much emphasis that, oh, what will it cost to marry this person? Okay, we'll need um, this, we'll need that. Mm -hmm. We need some money to do this, we need money to do that, mm -hmm. without looking at all other costs, mm -hmm. because there are all other costs oh, yes. oh, involved. Yes. That yeah. is not just money. Mm -hmm. Mm. There's the emotional cost. Oh, yes. 
There's yeah. the physical cost. Mm-hmm. There's a time, time cost. There are so many things involved. Yes. In, in order to pursue a particular relationship, it might not even be a marriage relationship or somebody for or concerning a life partner. It can be even in pursuance of a of a friend relationship. Mm-hmm. You have to count the cost. Will this person make me better or make me worse? Mm-hmm. Will this person help me or be bringing me down? And when we talk even about a life partner, before you even say yes, mm-hmm. I do, you should be able to look at the cost. This person, will he be able to help me emotionally? Will this person be able to help me physically? There are so many costs involved. Oh, yes. If you look at one, you have already seen one negative. Maybe the person treats you like dirt. <laughs> and you say, okay, it doesn't matter. Well, that will change. Mm-hmm. No, you have to look at it because at the end of the day, when a person treats you like dirt, you can look at yourself also as dirt. Oh, yes. And you start to lose all self-respect for yourself. Mm. You start to just become nothing. Mm. So you have to look at the cause. Mm. Who's going to help you to be fruitful? Mm. To blossom? Who's going to help you to become better? Oh, yes. So all these costs. Maybe someone who is not going to help you peace-wise. Even before you even say yes. You're already having fights. I'm not saying there won't be any fights, but yeah. this fighting is continuously. It's mm. like you don't agree on anything. Any reconcilable differences. differences. So yeah. why go ahead? <laughs> you look at your peace. That this person doesn't give me peace. Then why go ahead? That's a cause there. You are not seeing peace before you even enter the relationship. How much more when you enter into that relationship? Hmm. Will peace no. automatically now come? And some will say, well, uh, I, will, I will pray about it and peace will come. Mm. <laughs> That's dangerous. <laughs> uh, that can be very, very dangerous. Because especially on mm. the on the woman's side, mm. if the man is the one that's not giving you peace, mm. and you say, well, I will pray about it, mm. and uh, the man will change. Mm. Uh, you know, when do you become the Holy Spirit? Mm. <laughs> You can't change any person. Mm. The best thing is to making sure that those things are resolved before mm. you even say yes at mm. all. I do. Mm. Yeah. Even yeah. yeah. Even the mental cost. Yes. You have to consider. We have to consider such things. Mm. If you as a as a graduate, you want to marry somebody that has maybe finished primary school. Okay. You have to count the cost. Mm. Mm. Is this thing worth it? Mm. You have to count the cost. Mm. Because if you are not on the same level, there is no way you... There will be more fights, mm. more mentally. arguments. Mentally. Mentally. So am I Am I going to educate my spouse to come to the same level that I am? Yeah. Have I agreed to, uh, to doing that? Yes. Otherwise, if you go if a degree older, marry someone, you know, who is a primary school older, and they don't have plans to increase their mental capability mm. there will be there will be differences of opinions okay. there will be you know <laughs> there will be fighting because your thinking level will not be at the same level mm. that's 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 the truth mm. 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 having said that some primary school holders they spend time in personal developments you know they, they read they keep on reading now even when they talk they're wondering ah did he <laughs> did he go to <laughs> a uni uh-huh. But one should be able to look at the mental cost if the difference is, is so huge. And, and there's no way you can bring each other up, you know. Mm. There's no way you can bring your mental uh, you know, ability up. Then be very careful. Otherwise, it should be a fighting galore. Mm. Cats and dog living under the same roof. Mm. Tom and Jerry. Tom and Jerry. <laughs> <laughs> that is a program <laughs> on telly here yeah, in England. Uh, people know it. Okay, yeah. Okay. okay, okay, okay. That's mm. true. That's true. Uh, so all these things need to be checked. That you know what you are going into. So you've already looked at all these things and what to be done. Yeah. What about a person that says, I don't want to do any more reading. I'm okay uh, as I am. Uh, uh, okay. 
So you need to calm the cause. Are you okay with that decision? Mm. Mm. You don't mind. <laughs> Uh, so these things need to be checked. And some can even say that they will do it and then after there is a kind of problem. So mm, those things need to be sorted out. Mm, That's mm. why there must be honesty. Yes. The honesty level of that person, too, you must check it. Yes. The integrity of that person, you check it. This person, if I say, if he says that he's going to um, Sutherland, you must be very, very careful because you will hear that he was in Manchester mm. instead. Mm. Or maybe it's the woman. She'll say she's going to so and so, but you will not find her there. It's mm. somewhere else. Then you need to count the cost. Mm. Mm. These are some of the foundations we should, we should be able to trust one another, trust each other. So all these things are things that we need to look at. So, Before we decide to say, I do. Yeah. So are we saying that we should say I do to a perfect spouse? No. Uh, no. <laughs> but there are some things that are fundamental. Yes. That should be in place. Yes. So that, you know, other things can begin to work around those mm. fundamental uh, mm. principles. Mm. Uh, mm. So because there's no perfect spouse out there, no perfect husband, no perfect yes. wife. We say lie. <laughs> I have found my perfect, my perfect mate. Mm. <laughs> no, it's not true, mm. because we are all working in, in progress as mm. the husband to be, wife to be, or even mm. even as the husband and as the, and as the wife, we are mm. all progressing day by day. But some things are fundamental. Mm. You can't say because you're working in progress, and you tell your husband or your wife that you're going out. Mm. I mean, well, they found you, you know, in another place, and it's a, and it's a usual and it's a regular yeah, lifestyle. Strong. You know, you are, you know, that's not working progress. That is that is lying in manifestation. <laughs> <laughs> that's not working progress at all. That is lying mm. in manifestations. Mm. <laughs> you know, unfaithfulness, you know. Mm. And you are, you know. It's a red flag. Oh, right yes. There. You know, the... Even before marriage, that person must have been doing that now. Uh -huh. It didn't just start mm. in marriage. And the question is, even, can, can you, you see, if, if, a, if a man fears God mm. and loves his spouse, the way God loves, mm. some things will not be an issue. Mm. In the case you have, you, you, people are not even sure whether whether they are married someone that loves God or not. Can mm -hmm. you imagine? If you love God, you will love your spouse. Mm. If you love God, you will love your wife to be or you know your husband to be. You will not treat him or her the way God will not treat him, treat him or her. That's the, that's the bottom line. Once you have you know the love of God in your heart and you can show the same love to your spouse to be or your to your current mm. spouse, it will solve so many problems. Mm. Because the way God will I mean the way I will treat my wife should be the way God will treat treat her. Mm. The way she will treat me is the way God will treat me. If that is the basis of mm. the relationship, mm. I tell you the success is 99.9999% guaranteed. Mm. Because you are showing God to each other. Mm. You know, either, you know, you are preparing to get married and both of you are showing God to each other. Mm. When you are, you know, doing something wrong, mm. he or she corrects you in love and you mm. accept correction in love, mm. you, you can forgive. If you are showing God, if you are treating mm. each other the way God mm. will teach, teach each, I mean, teach you, I mean, treat you, I tell you that you will just be, you, you will enter into the marriage and challenges of life will not be able to cause the, Married to collapse, and you'll be counting one year, five mm. years, mm. ten years, mm. thirty years mm. in that relationship because God, love of God, mm. is the foundation. Mm. <laughs> shall, we should even look at also if you want to marry somebody, look at the money cost too. Mm -hmm. yeah. Is this person hard working mm. or is always relying on you, or she's always relying on you? Mm. We need to look at that too. Is the person lazy? Mm. Or the person is hard working. The person might not really have much, yeah. but it's hard working. Mm. That is mm. different from somebody that is trying to sponge off on you all the time. Mm. Mm. So you have to count the cause that this person, if I marry this person, <laughs> is this how this person is going to be doing? Is it that this person is lazy? Or the person is hard working? So that too, we need to count the cause. Mm. 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 And also count the cost of 
spending time with your with your family in case mm. a child comes into being mm. are you ready to spend time mm. to raise up your child mm. are you able to spend time with your family if you don't have the time for each other before you get married mm. ah god have mercy you and some they will have good time with their spouse spouse or especially men thank god for men they will be listening they, they will tell you talk on talk on talk on <laughs> tell their you know their fiancé you speak on speak on speak on after they after they got what they what they wanted the, the lady wants to wants to talk say please i'm busy now every, every time you are busy every time you are busy but when you are dating or you know when you are engaged with this lady she can sit down and talk to you for the next one or two hours mm. that you're happy but now <laughs> you don't want her to 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 waste your time because you are a man you are very busy no, don't don't do that. Count the cost because it takes time mm. to synergize or to be mm. one mm. in any marriage relationship. Mm. You need to talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. You need to be talking. Mm. If you don't talk, even <laughs> if you don't talk, <laughs> it's about the communication. You keep on talking, expressing yourself. You know when there are issues, you don't sweep them under the carpet. We have, we have, we have, we have spoken on this before on this on this program. Mm. You don't you don't sweep issues under the carpet. Mm. You bring it out from under the carpet, and you discuss it. Mm. You don't say you know let sleeping dog let sleeping dog lies. Discuss the wake up the sleeping dog. <laughs> discuss mm. the issue and let things be resolved. Mm. Mm. You know, we are I think we are doing marriage. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Mm. Marriage, marriage. Yeah. Yeah. So, <laughs> count the cost is very important in making decisions in life, whether they are small decisions or big decisions, oh, yeah. because a small decision can become a big decision. Oh, yes. Oh, so, yeah. for every decision that we make, we need to count the cost. There are so many costs that we need to look up before we can make the right judgment, the right decision. It can even be concerning a job, you have to count the cost. Okay, this job will give me more money, but it will give me less time. Mm -hmm. Maybe less time for other things that are also important. Mm. And you have to count the cost. Do I go with this job or not? Mm. Maybe for a, a length of time or something, and yeah. I go for it or not. Mm. Well, so should I have, choose a, uh -huh. a, I mean, the one is that, that, that is of uh, lower, lower wage. Yes, which I give uh, me time. Give me more time, yeah. Mm. So maybe a business project or something, proposal or something, in order to even make a decision concerning, you need to look at the cost. Look at the person that you are going into business with, count the cost. Mm. Is this person trustworthy? Is he honest? If he says you do something, will he do it? Mm. So all these things need to be looked at. So money is not everything. People can say, ah, money is the answer to everything, but we have already discussed yeah, it here yeah. before. That scripture is taken out of context. Oh, yes. It will say money answered all things concerning having a feast. You need money in order to yes. have a feast. Yeah. That's what he was talking yes. about there. Yes, to buy the items. To prepare the ground in the morning for those it things. Yeah. For a party. Yeah. So that's that. So we are looking at Judas. His decision to betray Jesus for 30 pieces of silver, which is money. He did not look at or regard all that cost that will also be involved. All mm -hmm. he looked at was the money, the financial <laughs> gain gain oh, that yes. he will get from that this is judas we are looking at when he was making that decision it was based on money we can say that he looked at only money or maybe he had some regards that okay there might be other cause but no it doesn't matter they don't matter so long as i get that money i've already got plans for that money mm. so what were the other cause that he didn't look at judas that we are learning from today. What were the other costs? There is reputation cost. Mm. His name cost. Mm. No wonder today, people, you if you call someone a Judas, <laughs> we all know that that's not a good thing, is it? So oh, he yes. became infamous. Mm. 
Mm. He didn't look at his cause that, uh -uh, that this will not help him. And it's in a negative way. A reputation cause. His name is associated with evil, with bad, be with betrayal. Oh, yes. So he didn't look at that cost. What about relationship cost? He didn't look at that relationship cost. If he had looked at it, he would have looked at it. That if I betray Jesus, he has never done me any wrong. If I betray him, I'll lose his relationship. The relationship that I've had with him mm. for the past three and a half years or thereabouts. Mm. And he didn't look at it either concerning the re relationship cost of even the other disciples. All of them have been going in and mm, out. They, are, they laugh together. They eat together. They <laughs> sleep together. They talk together. They do all these things together. He didn't look at that. Mm. That's how that he will lose these friendships. He didn't look at that cost. Mm. It wasn't anything to him. He didn't look at the mental cost. Mm. We know that he wasn't at peace. As soon as he saw what was happening, that okay, he has betrayed an innocent man. That these people, they are going to kill him. Maybe he thought that the enemy had told him that maybe they would just put him in prison for some time and they would release him <laughs> mm. or do one thing or the other. Mm. But he saw that the way things were going, that no, he doesn't even want this money anymore, that they should take their money. Mm. And they refused. So he didn't look at the mental cost, the stress that it will give him. And what happened as a result of that? He, at the end of the day, committed suicide. Mm -hmm. He didn't look at that cost. He didn't look at it that even that there was going to be the cost of being alone. Mm -hmm. There was nobody to talk to him. Nobody would be able to persuade him or anything, even if he was going to say anything to anyone. There was nobody who would be, he was able to confide in. He was lonely and not in a good way. <laughs> yeah. So all these things led to his abrupt end. He didn't even look at the cost of even what he was go he's doing to his relatives. Judas didn't just drop from heaven. He had relatives. Oh, yes. So he didn't look at that either. He didn't look at that cause that he will give them a headache and he will give them a bad name. Ah, ah, look at Judas. That's the brother of the... <laughs> the uh, look at um, so and so. That's the brother of Judas. He didn't look at that. That, ah, the people in that family, they are betrayers. Don't move, don't even go <laughs> close to them. They are known. They are known for that just because mm. of one person that spoiled the family's name. Mm. Mm. He didn't look at that cost. All he was about was that money. He must get his hand on that money. What about his office cost? Mm. The office cost. His bishopric at the end of the day was given to somebody else. He mm. didn't look at the cause that he was supposed to be one of the apostles, oh, although yes. it's been written that <laughs> yeah. he will betray mm, and they knew he wasn't going to repent from that anyway. Mm. Mm. But he lost his office. Mm. What about eternal cost? Mm. He didn't look at that, that if I do this thing mm. and I believe that he's the person I sent from God, I heard it when Peter said that this is the son of the living God. Hmm. I've seen experience, I've seen miracles for mm -hmm. myself. Oh, yes. Not staged, for real, mm. tangibly. He has seen them. He had been an eyewitness of these things. He didn't look at it that is it possible that he will have, that if he should die, hmm. that there is going to be an eternal separation from God. Mm. He didn't look at the eternal cost. Nobody is going to be jubilating over him mm. in heaven. Mm. Oh, you are here. So eternal separation, eternal damnation. He didn't look at the cost of that either. Yeah. You want to say something? No, 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 okay. No, no, no. Well said. Well yes. said. <laughs>
Well so what does that teach us? We should never make a decision solely based on money or financial gain. We must look at all other calls before we can make a good decision mm -hmm. or make a better informed decision. Mm -hmm. We need to look at all the calls, not just one. That is money, it's money, 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 that, that's it. And we are okay with that. No. You have to look at various costs. Hmm. If I do this thing, is it going to am I going to be able to live with myself? Hmm. Look at these costs. I'm hmm. not that kind of person. I won't be able to live with myself. Then count the costs and say, okay, I'm not going to do that thing. Hmm. Hmm. So it's not all about money. So please note there is betrayal for the truth. That is betrayal for the truth. Mm. That is someone who exposes the truth so that people can know what is really going on. And, is, and it is because as a result of this that people are set free. Mm. They can say that that person is a betrayer, mm -hmm. but is on the side of the truth. Mm. Mm. And because that person is on the side of the truth, he is doing the work of God. Oh, yes. Because he is bringing the truth that, okay... I used to be among those that were lying. Mm -hmm. Or maybe I didn't know better. Oh, yeah. And now he's come out, or she has come out, or they have come out. Mm. And they are now saying, oh, what we thought was the truth is not the truth. So they're exposing the truth about such people, that mm. these people are not giving us the truth. And that one is quite different from the betrayal against the truth, yes. which we can see in Judas Iscariot. Oh, yes. So we are looking at Paul and he's counting the cost. Hmm. We know that he counted the cost, even though he didn't count it in our presence, but there are... <laughs> he <laughs> yeah, yeah. It in our presence. Okay. But because he mentioned something, we know that he counted the cost. Mm. Philippians 3, 4 to 10. You're all welcome. Thanks for joining us. Mm. I appreciate you. Mm. That's our brother. Mm. <laughs> welcome, sir. Mm. I'm blessed. Mm. Pastor, too. I appreciate you. Mm. Yeah. I'm looking at count the cost mm. as a disciple of Christ. Yeah. Philippians 3, 4 to 10. Though I might also have confidence in the flesh, if any other man thinks that he has reasons, he might trust in the flesh, I more. Circumcise the eighth day of the stock of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of the Hebrews, concerning the law, a Pharisee, concerning zeal, persecuting the church, concerning the righteousness, which is in the law, blameless. But what things we are gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Yea, doubtless. And I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord, for whom I have suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but rubbish or dung that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is through the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death. So here we want to look at a few things. From this passage, we know that Paul counted the cost of knowing Christ, mm. of wanting to know Christ, of wanting to know his Savior, to wanting to know his Lord. We can't say that because of his experience on the road of Damascus, he did not have a choice in the matter. Mm. God has given man his man 
his creation a free will. Oh, yes. And Paul had to exercise his free will. So, determining whether to seek to know Christ or to go back to his gains, enumerated in verse 4 to verse 6. Let's look at some of those things. Yeah. The summary of it all is from verse 4 to verse 6. He says, circumcise the eighth day, mm. which was a sign of being a child of the Abrahamic covenant. Oh, yes. Which means that he also had access mm. to worship in the temple. Mm. He could freely go and worship in the temple. Mm. He also mentioned that he was of the stock of Israel. Mm -hmm. So that is known as God's people. Oh, yes. Who knew the real God? <laughs> yeah. An achievement. The name Israel commanded respect among other nations. We oh, know yes. that. Oh, yeah. So if he's saying that he's of Israel, he's of the stock of Israel. He commanded respect. So that was an achievement too. If he wanted to go by the flesh, it's an achievement. That he was from the tribe of Benjamin. That he could trace his genealogy. Hmm. One of the 12 patriarchs. Hmm. Hmm. Another thing he mentioned was that he was a, a Hebrew of the <laughs> Hebrews. Oh, yes. To us, that means that he was saying that he, there's no mixture in him. <laughs> there's no half Hebrew, mm -hmm, half Egyptian. Mm -hmm. Mixed race. I was <laughs> pure bread. <laughs> there's no mixture anywhere that is Hebrew. Mm. That's it. It is an achievement. Mm. Mm. He said touching the law, a Pharisee. That was his status, an achievement. Mm. Before you become a Pharisee, you must have done a lot of work mm. to become a Pharisee. And that means that he was a custodian also of the law of Moses. He was a high-ranking official who had studied under the doctor of the law called Gamaliel. If we look at Acts 22, 3 and 4, are we reading those? Yeah, 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 mm. yeah. Yeah, these are his achievements. A famous doctor of the law, he learned... At his feet. At his feet. Mm. Acts 22, 3 and 4. Mm. I am verily a man who is a Jew, born in Tassos. Okay. A city in Cilicia, yet brought up in this city at the feet of Gamaliel and taught according to the perfect manner of the law or the fathers and was zealous towards God as you all are this day. Mm -hmm. And I persecuted this way unto the death, binding mm -hmm. and delivering into prisons both men and women. Mm -hmm. mm. And Acts 5. Mm. 34 okay. describes um, Gamaliel, mm. doctor of the law. Mm. Mm. Acts 534. <laughs> then stood there up one in the council, a Pharisee named Gamaliel, a doctor of the law, had in reputation among all the people and commanded to put the apostles forth a little pace, mm -hmm. and okay. said unto a space, and said unto them, Ye men of Israel, take heed to yourself what you intend to do as touching these men. Okay. So and so on. But we know I'm sure many of us know the story. Yeah. So there we are able to see that he was somebody that studied onto a repu under a reputable person. Mm. So look at all these qualifications I had. And even as a result of that, even we are told that he was able to profit. Mm. There was a lot of profit. I think that's in another scripture yeah. that talks about him. So he, it was a means of livelihood for him. Mm. He wasn't suffering. He didn't lack. He mm. had more than enough. Mm. Mm. Then apart from that, he said concerning zeal, mm. part of his resume, concerning zeal, mm. it was persecuting the church, persecuting the body of Christ. 
persecuting the body. He was not persecuting the building or any building. He was persecuting people that form the body of Christ. He was persecuting them. Then another thing from first four to four to six. Yeah, that's what we are. Three, yeah. um, four to six. That's what we are looking at. We are just giving a summary. Touching the righteousness in the law, he was blameless. Hmm. Followed all the six hundred plus laws of Moses without fail. Hmm. So highly esteemed among the people and his colleagues. So the subtotal of these things highlighted. Concerning, okay, the subtotal of these things highlighted. What's this? Sir? Okay, I think that like this offered Paul financial okay. gain. Okay, okay, gave him financial gain, yeah. status gain, yeah, Gamalia and the associates, yeah. So he had connections in high places, mm -hmm. he had access to the high priest. Who was able to give him letters mm. to all the, to Damascus to all the synagogues so that they can give up all the people that were around there mm. or in that vicinity. Mm. Mm. It so was a, it was a big fish. Yes, <laughs> so it was a big <laughs> fish. <laughs> Highly connected individual. Mm. Uh. So you can imagine he had all these high class people. Sort of at his beck and call. He could just go and meet them. Oh, give me letters. I need to go to the other places and go and get all these people arrested. Go and put them in prison. Mm. So that he could em enforce his agenda. That was the zeal that he had. That he should go to Damascus. Take all the people that he could find around that place, arrest them and drag them to mm. Jerusalem. Mm. That was his agenda. And he thought he was working for God. Mm. He was a defender of God. Mm. Meanwhile, he was doing the devil's agenda, mm. not God's agenda. Yeah. Acts 9, 1 and 2. Yeah. Mm. And Saul, yet, yet breathing out threatenings and slaughter against the disciples of the Lord, went unto the high priest and desired of him letters to Damascus, to the synagogues, that if you found any of this way, whether they were men or women, he might bring them bound unto Jerusalem. <laughs> so we cannot. We can also infer concerning the achievements, concerning the gains that Paul had, that he had one of the best houses mm. in the best location because he was a Pharisee. Oh, yes. <laughs> we can infer that. We can also infer that he had servants who served him. Mm. Not one, not mm. two. We can also infer that he had a good wife to match that status. Mm. Because we know that they said Pharisees, before they can become a Pharisee, yeah. one of the qualifications is that he must be married. Mm, mm. Although, you know, there's a debate about that. There's a debate, but... Uh, <laughs> mm. Mm. To match that status, uh, we are inferring. Anyway. Okay, okay. <laughs> Why to match that status. Mm -hmm. Then we can, we also know that he had an uh, official entourage that he... He went with when he wanted to go to Damascus. Mm. So his lifestyle was sponsored by the state. Mm. He profit. Uh, the Bible even says that he profited. He even said it mm -hmm. that he profited in the Jewish religion. Mm. Galatians 1, 13 and fourteen. Mm. There mm. was profit to be made. Mm. A lot of profit. Mm. Mm. A lot mm. of places to be invited to. Mm. Mm. Now come and speak with us here. Come <laughs> and do this. Come and teach us. Mm. Mm. We're inviting you mm. to come mm. and help us here. Mm. We'll pay you well. Mm. Galatians. Galatians 1, 
Galatians 1, 13 and 14. For you have heard of my manner of life in time past, in the Jewish religion, how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and advanced in the Jewish religion, above many of my equals in my own nation, being more exceedingly zealous of the traditions of my fathers. KJ, KJ Bajon says, and profited and profited in the Jewish religion mm. above many of my equals mm. in my own nation. Mm. Mm. So that tells us that there was a lot. Mm. And yet in verse 7, Philippians 4. Philippians 4, we are told that he said all these things, he counted them as loss mm. for Christ. Mm. But he didn't say it in a way for people to pity him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He wasn't saying it to get some pity or how will we put it? To invite a, to sympathy yeah, a or party. anything. Yeah. He was saying it with joy. Mm. Why do we say that he was saying it with joy? If we look at that verse 1, mm -hmm. Philippians 3 verse 1 yeah. talks about joy. Rejoice in the Lord. Rejoice. And then we also know that it's the same Paul that said rejoice in the Lord. Again. And again, I say rejoice. Mm. Mm. So he wasn't having a pity party that he has lost all these things. He lost them for Christ. That's verse 7. Verse 8. He counted the cost of all his achievements, all his fleshly achievements, the ones that he achieved by himself and the one that he didn't. And we've said that before, even in this program. Yeah. That there were some that he had no hand in it at all. <laughs> he was just born into being a Jew. <laughs> he didn't tell yeah. God, God, please put me among the Jews. I want to be born by someone that is Jewish mm. Mm. or Hebrew. No. He found himself there. But he could use that to get into different places. Oh, yes. To gain access. So he counted the cost of all his achievements. Everything, all those achievements, he counted them and he estimated them as what? As dung. Mm. As garbage. As refuge. Mm -hmm. Root. Yeah, refuse. Refuse. Yeah. For the excellency. That is surpassing value, priceless pri privilege, superior knowledge that Christ will bring if he has knowledge of him. That that will be superior to everything that he has achieved. He counted it for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ mm. Jesus my Lord. That was Paul. Mm. That everything else is garbage, garbage. Mm. Doctor <laughs> Paul, mm. 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 ah, eminent, mm. so and so, mm. did this of this, of this district, of that district, mm. that has five um, honorary degrees, that has this, that has that. He counted everything as garbage, as dumb, as fit for nothing. For the excellency, he chose the knowledge. Because if we look at Paul, when he was converted and he sat down and he, saw, he sat down, there was always a choice for him mm. to make and say, mm. okay, okay, my eyes are open again or my eyes are not open. I'm going back to my old lifestyle. Mm -hmm. I don't mm -hmm. want anything to do with all this. Mm. Look at what I have to lose. Mm. Mm. It's too much. <laughs> but he sat down and he considered it time and time again. And he will still come up with that, that for the knowledge of the excellency. For the excellency of the knowledge of Christ. That's what he was after. Knowledge, knowledge of Christ, knowledge of Christ, knowledge of Christ. And guess what? God allowed him to exercise his free will. Yes. Because God is a God of free will. And he has given man free will too. Mm. 
God allowed Apostle mm. Paul to exercise his free will. Thank God, he chose a right. Mm. He weighed his options and mm. he went for mm. the you know mm. for the knowledge of of Christ, mm. which is which cannot be compared so, um, to all those things that he possessed. Mm. Free will, free will. Mm. He could have gone back and said, I'm sorry, all my <laughs> colleagues, please take me back. <laughs> Even my house, I'm taking my house back. That mm. is my house anyway. Mm. Mm. But no, he counted it as done. And if we look at Colossians 2, verse 3, Evil made reference to Christ being what? All the treasures of wisdom and knowledge that are hid in Christ. Mm. Can you imagine? Treasures. That is calling the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. Treasures. And they are hid in Christ. Mm. That's what he counted as treasure. Mm. Not all those achievements that he had made. That that's what was important to him. That's what his priority was. Why did he choose knowledge above all these earthly achievements or gains? We will say, we know that Paul was once a victim mm. of ignorance. That means mm. lack of knowledge. Oh, yes. Coupled with zeal, with zeal <laughs> which led him to do many atrocities. 1 Timothy 1 13. Yeah. Mm. So lack of knowledge led him to doing many atrocities against the brethren, against people that should be his his allies, people that should be his friends, mm. people that should be able to help him. Mm. He made them enemies because of the lack of knowledge that he had. Mm. Okay, let me yeah. yeah. Who was before a blasphemer and a persecutor and insolent, but I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly mm. in unbelief. Mm. <laughs> you see, he knew it was ignorance, uh, unbelief, ignorance, lack of knowledge that made him to make the children of God the disciples, his enemies. And he spent his... And because of that ignorance that he had, that he was exhibiting, mm -hmm. he spent his time, his energy, his money, his abilities wrongly. Oh, yes. So lack of knowledge. Ignorance can cause a person to waste his resources. Mm. Mm. Because he discovered he was a victim of ignorance, he chose to have knowledge of Christ above all his earthly gains or mm. achievements. We should know that he could not marry the two. Mm. It was either the law of Moses. Okay, he couldn't marry the two. That is joining the law of Moses and the law of Christ together. Mm. So he had to choose one and he decided to go for the knowledge of Christ. He already knew everything about the law <laughs> and it has brought him thus far. Oh, yes. So he needed now a superior knowledge as we have learned. The excellency was a superior knowledge that he could only find in Christ. That's why he chose that. That's why he chose knowledge of Christ above every other thing and he could only choose one he couldn't put one leg in the law and say I'm still following the law and say I'm also following the law of Christ mm. he had to choose one and he decided to choose that this one is better why was it better because he came to understand that those things that he had been following were just a substance it was a shadow. It was a shadow. Yeah, it was a shadow, yeah. Of the things to come. Mm -hmm. And he was able to get to understand and even teach others mm. from that perspective. So he started to know. He had to go on a mission of knowing Christ, of knowing who he was, what he had said, what he had done. 
He had to go on that mission to deliver himself from ignorance. And then we also know that he knew that God had not married the law and the law of Christ together. Mm -hmm. So what God had not joined together, he shouldn't join them together. Mm -hmm. The law of Moses and the law of Christ. We can't. Even now, we are not supposed to. It doesn't help us. Mm -hmm. Even along the line, he, he said it. He, he couldn't, he, he wasn't able to cope with that. In fact, I, I frustrate not the grace of God. Mm. It's frustrating when there's the law, he's still practicing the law of Moses and he's also trying to do the law of Christ. Mm. He said, I frustrate not the grace of God. This was Paul. So in pursuance of the excellency, the superior knowledge of Christ, he went to Arabia, Damascus, before even meeting any of the disciples, the yeah. apostles in Jerusalem, mm. Galatians 1, mm. 13 to 18. Yeah, yeah. Before going around like that, no wonder the Bible says, he said, I conferred not with flesh and blood. Mm. When he had that revelation on the road of uh, on Damascus Road, yeah, he said immediately, "I conferred not with flesh and blood." Mm. So he didn't go around that. Okay, this one I need to sit down and look at these things for myself, mm. looking at it from a new angle, from a new perspective. Paul was a victim, as we have said. He was a victim of ignorance yeah. or lack of knowledge coupled with zeal. So he made it his mission mm -hmm. to deliver others that were also victims of ignorance. Mm, that's profound. That's deep. Mm. If we look, no wonder I was telling the, the Colossians 3.16, mm -hmm. popular. Yeah. That let the word of Christ where really you reach it. So people should have knowledge. Let the word, not sparingly, hmm. but richly. In them, in all wisdom. Hmm. The more knowledge of Christ that you, that you have, the more the Holy Spirit will be able to use those to help us. Oh, yes. In correct application of the knowledge. That this is where you apply this. This is where you apply this. Um, 2 Timothy 2.15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, yeah. a workman that needs not to be ashamed, right. rightly dividing the, the word of truth. Of mm. truth. Mm. So we are supposed to study. Paul studied. Mm. Mm. And he's calling all of us to study. Personally, sit down and study. Study to show thyself, not somebody else. Thyself, approved unto God. Then we have um, 1 Corinthians 12, 1. That talks about Paul saying, I don't want you to be ignorant concerning the gifts of the Spirit. Mm. He hated ignorance with a passion. Oh, yes. Because he had been a victim of this. Mm. First Thessalonians 4.13. Yeah. That one or you want to say? Yeah, I can, I can, we can just read that. It's same, I think it's saying concerning those who, who are asleep. Mm. I don't want to be ignorant. Mm. I don't want to be ignorant because as per those who are asleep. Yeah. Mm. Which means they are going to rise up. And you see them again. And we'll see them again. Yeah. That is mm. a, that's good job. First Thessalonians 4.13. 13. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just read from here briefly. Yeah. Those who are asleep. But I will not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them who are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others who have no hope. Mm. So those who are ignorant will be sorrowing mm. hopelessly. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so as for those who are, if you read down, it's talking about you know that oh, on, the, on the last day they will rise up and you know we also join them. Mm. And when Christ comes, they will they will rise up first, mm. they will join them. So he educated them, don't be sorrowful, don't mm. be hopeless. Mm. Lack of knowledge will cause hopelessness mm. and sorrowfulness. Mm. 
mm. which is not needed where you know what you what you need to know mm. so although in this particular context he was talking about brethren that when they sleep yeah when they die yeah yeah that, that's not the end of everything yeah 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 so there's knowledge for every kind of thing knowledge for everything yeah, yeah. not just knowledge concerning one thing but knowledge concerning everything that we need mm. to know yeah Concerning different subjects, different topics, knowledge. We need knowledge concerning everything. Mm. So, and we know that Paul, he did gather... Okay. Sorry, I think I won't read Acts 22. That's okay. uh, when okay. he was saying, when oh, he, oh, he was speaking to the official okay. uh, church. Let's just say Acts 20. To see the way he pursued mm. in passing knowledge, knowledge with passion. Mm. Acts 20... Acts 20. 18 to 20. Yeah. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, You know from the first day that I came, that I came into Asia, after what manner I have been with you at all times, serving the Lord with all humility of mind, and with many tears and temptations which befell me by the living, by the lying in wait of the Jews. And how I kept back nothing that was profitable unto you, but have showed you and have taught you publicly and from house to house. That was Apostle Paul. Mm. Testifying both to the Jews and also to the Greeks, repentance towards God and faith towards our Lord Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. He was doing it publicly. Mm. After public meeting, he will also go from house to house. Mm. You know, which type of leader is that? Mm. Mm. <laughs> After public meeting, he will still go from house to house mm. to impart knowledge mm. so that it will not be a casualty mm. of ignorance. Mm. He was once a casualty. Mm. He hated lack of knowledge with passion and he took steps toward making sure that mm. nobody came across Apostle Paul. Mm. That will not get educated. Mm. You will go with something. Mm. <laughs> something that will set you mm. free. Mm. And he was doing it day by day. Mm. In fact, to the to the efficient short, he spent about three years doing that. Mm. Day, night and day, educating them. Mm. He will go, he will go to work, come back from work, go to speak publicly, then go from house to house day by day. Mm. <laughs> mm. So we know that one third of the New Testament is written by him why because he had learned a lot about christ mm. he was in pursuance of that knowledge and he did get that knowledge and that's why he wanted to impart it to us and those he wanted to impart it not only to people then but even people that will be coming after that time mm. even today we are learning a lot through paul the apostle to the Gentiles. We have learned a lot. And that's why he put it down in writing so that we too, we can learn these things and not be ignorant to eradicate ignorance concerning the knowledge of Christ. He put all these things down. So Paul's lament, <clears throat> there's an aspect also concerning Paul's lament over fellow Israelites in Romans 10, 1 to 3, that they have zeal, mm. but they lack knowledge, mm -hmm. was lamenting concerning them. He desired that they too, they should know, they should even know Christ, have knowledge of Christ. So he was lamenting there that they have zeal, but without knowledge. Mm. And he knows that he was lamenting because he had been a victim of that. We'll say he was a victim mm. of zeal without knowledge. We also know that even Peter, he told believers to add to their faith knowledge. Mm -hmm. mm. Second Peter 1 5, add to your faith mm. knowledge. Mm. And that knowledge, not not every, not okay, how would I put it now? So that people will not yeah. think I'm saying something else. Not only knowledge from the Bible. Knowledge 
uh -huh, not only from the Bible, from, but from other writings that will help you or help us in our journey of life. Yes. Some things are not contained in the Bible. Yes. But they are out there that can help us. Yes. So we should avail ourselves the privilege of assessing such knowledge, buying books mm -hmm. that will help us, you know, to eradicate ignorance in mm. so many areas of our lives. Mm. Mm. So not only the Bible knowledge, mm. but other useful knowledge out there. Yes. Yes. So ignor ignorance is not a garment that looks good on anyone. <laughs> okay. Mm. <laughs> Mm. Take responsibility and sit at the word for yourselves. We must all take responsibility in order to know whether what we are holding on to is right knowledge or not. Mm. Because when the Bible says my people perish for lack of knowledge, it's talking about the right knowledge. Mm. We can say we have knowledge and yet it is the wrong knowledge. Mm. And when it is the wrong knowledge, it equates to no knowledge. Mm. Mm. to lack of knowledge mm. so we need to take responsibility and not leave it to somebody ah this person has achieved so much so let me just be listening to their teaching to mm. their teachings let me just listen and that's it i don't examine it i don't do anything i don't prove it mm. let me just take it must be right because i can see all these achievements I can see all these millions of followers. I can see this. I can see how how rich mm -hmm. the person is. So mm -hmm. it must be right. No. Mm -hmm. We have to take responsibility. Study mm -hmm. to show thyself approved. We have to take responsibility. Okay. We don't read really that one. Yeah, mm -hmm. but you can, uh, you know, I've, I've mentioned it. Okay. Yeah. So we have to take responsibility. Everybody, every child of God is supposed to take responsibility. And not just leave it to teachers. Hey, we have teachers in the body of Christ. Let them teach us. Not all teachers are teachers. <laughs> we even have teachers that are false teachers. Mm, mm. So how will we know the true teachers? If what you are reading and what they are telling you... Mm are two different things. A teacher can come and just be saying some things. Hmm. Maybe take one verse and give it its own interpretation. <laughs> Meanwhile, oh, what yeah. the scripture is even talking about there is completely different. Mm, mm, but they have mm. formed their own Bible, a mm. caricature mm. of the Bible. And mm. people will say, yes, we are all reading now. Uh -uh. We were holding the Bible now when the person was reading it. <laughs> Meanwhile, the person has quickly taken out one word hmm. and inserted another one. Hmm. The person dwells more in the old than in the new. Hmm. I say, you must follow this. You must follow this. Meanwhile, it's not even part of what we are supposed to follow. Hmm. 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 The old should not be our comfort zone. We learn from the old, but we need to bring it to the new. Mm. Bring it to the lens of the new and mm. see whether it is for us or not. Mm. You are saying, how do you know the right teacher? When someone is teaching you and that and that teaching is not, it's not empowering you, mm. you know, it's not, it's, not, it's not equipping you to go and apply it and see results. Mm. But that person is teaching you, you know, Towards himself, you know, he wants mm. he wants to enslave you towards himself for mm. life. Mm. <laughs> for example, like uh, the, the last let's talk, we are talking about uh, Elijah and Elisha's agenda. Mm. People were telling you Elisha put water into the hands of Elijah. Mm. Why? They want their followers to serve them for for, for, for a life. lifetime for life. And even after life, they should still serve keep them. Keep on serving their... By serving their, even their children, uh, uh, <laughs> their offspring. Yeah. So when somebody is teaching you and the thing is not empowering you. It's not. It's not equipping you. Mm. You know, you can't apply it and see results. Then, mm. then please, no apologies. You just know that that's a wrong teacher. Christ, when he taught people, mm. he wanted them. He, he wanted. Them, he, wanted them, he wanted them to be like him. Mm. Can you imagine all that he was doing? He also equipped them to go and do. even before mm. he, before he, before, mm. he, before he left the world, he said them to go and do what he did. Mm. So having listened to Jesus Christ for for years, 
Mm. He asked them to go and do what he did while he was alive. Mm. Even when he left, he now empowered them with his spirit. Mm. So when the person who says the teacher is sitting you and you don't get something out of it, mm. ah, then also when you have a witness, mm. that's so important. Mm -hmm. Learn to have a witness. You you are just you are not happy. You are not you are not you are not so yeah yeah. Learn to identify a witness. You are not happy with what you are hearing. God even Holy Ghost even go further and give you dreams, visions, revelations concerning that person you are listening to, that person is not your right teacher. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, if you continue to listen to that person, that will not end well. Mm -hmm. So you can know your right mm -hmm. teacher by, by this. They want you to be who, who you are called to be. Mm -hmm. They want you to be strong. You, know, they, they, you are equipped mm -hmm. for the truth. They want to speak the truth. Discover who you are, follow it, you know, stand and they always talk about the truth, about Christ, mm. not about themselves. Mm. If they're, that's true, just about themselves. They testify so that people can see them as a big man of God who can achieve a lot, and mm. others, can, others cannot achieve. Mm. <laughs> mm. Then some teachers are not helpful to you, know, mm. <laughs> to you as a person. Mm. There's somebody who, you know, who taught you, I mean, who gave, I mean, he gave testimonies, and they saying, you too can do it. Mm -hmm. You too can achieve that. Yes. It's only for me. Is also for every child of God. Yes. The God in me is the same God in you. Yes. That's the right teacher. Mm. The Holy Ghost in me is the same Holy Ghost in you. That's the right teacher. Mm. And someone who says your whole, your, whole, your whole Holy Ghost is Junior. <laughs> junior Holy Ghost. <laughs> <Very good. laughs> oh, no, oh, no, you know, oh, no, you know, they won't say like, they, they won't say it like that. Oh, but, small. Uh, but the way they will say it is, is such that the, you, 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 you'll be wondering, ah, the Holy Ghost in me, I, I think it's Junior, it's Junior 21 as he is carrying. <laughs> junior Holy Spirit. <laughs> And they say, but who says, look, you have the same Holy Ghost. Yes. The anointing on you is the same anointing on Christ. Yes. You can do what he did. Yes. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. that's, really, that's teacher. That's mm -hmm. little. Mm -hmm. Listen mm -hmm. to. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it took, it took um, Jesus only three and a half years. Yes. Oh, yes. To build men. Mm. Men temples that could go out and turn the world upside down. Oh yes. Just three and a half years. Oh. Yeah. To teach them. And for them to become temples, buildings that are not made by hands. Mm, mm, and mm, to go mm. out and to turn the world upside down. That's profound. That's interesting. So how long should it take? 10 years, 20 years, 30 years hmm. to be built up? No. Mm. We should follow Jesus now. If he spent only three and a half years building these men mm, up. Mm. So how many years should it take? And guess what? He was teaching them what he had from the Father. Yes. So no wonder the time was enough. Mm. Because he was teaching them what he had from the Father. Mm. He said the son would not teach anything. Except. except what he hears from the Father. Yes. And he was not seeking his own glory also mm. in his teaching. Mm. He was seeking the glory of the Father. Yes. No wonder he could, he could, he could, he could achieve mm. within that he has risen up mm. temple men, as we mentioned. Mm. Temple men, men that turned the world upside down. He didn't come here to build houses, but mm. he came to build men who are the real houses. Then something before we go on, when we talk about Jesus, and uh, when we talk about the Holy Ghost, Confirming to us whether someone is a false teacher or is teaching the truth or not. Yeah. There are other methods also. The word of God mm -hmm. is there also. Oh, yes. Because some people have even left. They now look at things that, oh, I had a dream. Okay, I yeah. had a revelation. Uh -huh, and, okay. I had, and that's the emphasis. Mm -hmm. But tell them to bring scripture to line up with what they have said. Mm. They cannot. Oh, yes. Or they oh, yeah. just bring up one scripture that <laughs> does not even match it at all. Oh. <laughs> okay. I had a dream. I had a vision. Uh, I had a dream because mm. that one too is out there. Mm. 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 So the Holy Ghost will give you even scriptures. Mm. 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 That this and this and this, this and this and this, this and this and this, and not only one old, no, not only one uh, from the old. Uh, he will, he will also come up with the new. Mm -hmm. <laughs> not only just one from the old testament. Mm -hmm. uh, that's interesting. Mm 
Uh, we have already dealt with um, hearing God, too, yeah. so people can go yeah, yeah. and look at our yeah, series on yeah. hearing God. Let's talk one, two, three, four. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's talk one, let's talk two, let's talk three, let's talk four. They are available on Facebook, on our timelines, and they are also available on YouTube. Mm-hmm. Let's talk one, mm-hmm. two, three, four. Mm-hmm. The ho- principles of choice. Okay. Yeah. The Holy Spirit is our teacher. Are we, and we can limit him mm. when we lack knowledge. Mm. We can limit the Holy Spirit when we are not doing our own due diligence to even study the word. How would he now speak to us if we are not studying the word? How would he teach us and bring to our remembrance whatever Jesus Christ has said? Because he will reference the word. He will reference Jesus Christ. He will bring to our remembrance, even as Jesus Christ said, John 14, 26, that he will send the comforter in his name. He will send the comforter who will teach us all things and bring to our remembrance whatever he has said. So he will reference the word. The Holy Ghost will reference the word. He will bring it to our remembrance, to our memory. But if we can't, we don't even know the scriptures. How would he do that? Although he can use other methods, but it's not as it's not mm. going to be as mm. how would I put it? Mm. I would ask maybe I would rather say it's easier. Mm-hmm. I know with Holy Ghost, with Holy Ghost, you know, you know, not just difficult for the Holy Spirit, mm. but but it's easier for you to assess what he's saying mm. when yes. you have a scripture. Yes. When you have a data bank of the word of God. Yes. And yeah. you have a data bank of other knowledge too. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Mm. Mm. It's, it's, it's easier for us to assess mm. what yes. he's saying. Because he'll easily just line it up with what he knows that you already know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And bring maybe new knowledge. Oh, maybe yes. he'll bring the old knowledge and then he'll bring new and put them side by side. Oh, yes. Matching them up. Aligning them so that I'm granting you understanding. Mm. Also. So we are to read the Bible and also to read other books. Mm. And even and even the Holy Ghost too can he reference books. He can reference books. He mm. can tell us, go and read this book. Go and listen to this person. Mm. Go and listen to these messages. Go and do this course or go and do that course. Mm. all these things so that we can fulfill our mission on earth, our assignment on earth. The Bible says in Proverbs 10, 14, that wise men store up knowledge. Mm. Wise men store up knowledge. They store pile on knowledge because when they have enough knowledge, then the Holy Ghost can take from that knowledge and give you right application. But if you don't have the knowledge, how would he be able to help us to apply it to the right situation? Mm -hmm. And even sometimes he can take things that are completely unrelated and bring them together. Oh, yes. And you will know that this is... This is only God that could have done this. It's only the Holy Ghost that could have done this. Mm. And join them together. So to be wise people, we need to store up knowledge. Store up knowledge. So that the Holy Ghost can easily gain access to speaking to us. Because he will now take that knowledge. And now he can bring even new knowledge, old knowledge. Bring them together and say, okay, this is it. Hmm. Let me just give a, an example that came to mind. <clears throat> you know, last year, at the beginning of the year, around March, hmm. one of the particular you know, COVID issues started in the UK. Thank God for where we are today, but it was terrible then, around March or around March, April. And somebody close to us was having symptoms of COVID. And I, I, I prayed for the person on the on phone. And when I dropped the phone, only people just brought, brought a particular phrase to mind concerning the COVID, that this also shall pass. That was a phrase 
that I read from Abraham Lincoln's quotation, you know, the former U.S. presidents during the war, yeah, in honor of the former U.S. presidents during the uh, civil war in the U.S. that ended the slave trade. He said, this also shall pass. So I have read that quotation and the Holy Ghost now brought that one up to encourage the person I prayed for on the phone that this also shall pass. And the person, thank God, the person went through that challenges and she's alive today to God be the glory. But the Lord didn't give me a Bible passage there. He gave me the quotation by one of the former presidents of the, you know, the U.S. that I have read, mm. and it was inside my data bank. Mm. So he just went there and paid them out. Mm. <laughs> but he is the Lord. He's the Lord. Mm. He determines. Yeah. What he's going to use. Yeah. Use. So that's an example of mm. referencing other things that you have read. Mm. Or a song. I can even bring a song. <laughs> I can bring a song mm. in line with what is happening. Mm. You know. Many a times, maybe you are maybe you are feeling discouraged, and you just hear the, you just hear this, you just hear a song. Don't be discouraged. Mm -hmm. It can be a secular song you have, that you have had so many years ago, mm -hmm. and they are inside your yeah. data bank. Not necessarily a Christian. It's, uh, it's a yeah. Christian. Mm -hmm. It's Christian. It's a Christian song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, the Holy yeah. Ghost will just take a part. Yes. Who is the author of music? Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Even if we have um, songs that have been adulterated, or what? Yes. Okay. We still have the genuine. So if he takes that phrase and yeah. he uses it to speak to you, oh yeah, oh yeah, you can't say, "Ah, I didn't hear. I don't want to listen." Oh, that cannot be God. God chooses the method. Mm. He determines the method. Mm. If his music wants to use, he will use it. Yeah, and it can reference an unpopular. Man of God. Mm. People are saying that, that that man of God is he's so popular. He's a very bad person. Mm. I don't to say go and go and listen to him. Mm. He can tell you go and go and hear him. <laughs> or mm. ah, that man of God ah, he's so good, fantastic. He's he's mm. and this. Mm. And all those will say that is no good area for you. Mm. Mm. That is no go area for you. Mm -hmm. Don't go. <laughs> <laughs> and listen. <laughs> no. no. So referencing by the Lord mm. is ref he, he wants to reference. Mm. And when he references, please let us follow it through. Mm. One thing is for to reference mm. a resource mm. of knowledge. Mm. Another thing is for us to follow through. Mm. Let us follow through mm. so that we can have testimonies concerning our lives. So mm. that we can we can we can enjoy his help mm. when the need uh, mm. arises. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. Okay. Mm. We thank God for what God has done mm. today. Mm. Hallelujah. We appreciate you. Thanks mm. for joining us one more time. Mm. We are going to just pray briefly for those who are believing God for sound health. Mm. It is the will of God that we should live a healthy life. Why? So that we can have a healthy body to carry out his will here on earth. Mm. So, no wonder Jesus Christ, apart from teaching people about the kingdom of God, mm. he also healed the sick. Mm. And he has also sent us mm. to go and teach about the kingdom of God, mm. to heal the sick, mm. to raise the dead. Mm. Freely we have received, freely. freely we should give. So, you are watching this program and you are having health challenge. It doesn't matter mm. which type. Mm. Whether virus related, mm. whether blood related, mm. whether um, organ related, mm. system related, it doesn't matter the name. Mm. There is power in the name of Jesus. Oh, yes. So we are going to decree right now and command healing to take place mm. in your life. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We give Thank you praise. Lord. We give you praise for those who are, who are watching us. And Lord, they are having health challenge. We speak to your body to be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. The name of Jesus flows through the air into your life right now. 
the name of Jesus. And causes healing to take place in the name of Jesus. Amen. The Bible says, we shall lay our hands upon the sick, they shall recover. Oh, yes. So, through this program, we will lay our hands upon the sick. Name of Jesus. And we say, the sick recover in the name of Jesus. Amen. We have not come in our own holiness, in our own righteousness, but we have come through the faith in Jesus. Mm. We have come by the faith of but by the faith in that name of Jesus. So let the blind see in the name of Jesus. Amen. Every high condition be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. The person who had been programmed to end his life very soon will reverse that in the name of Jesus. Amen. And every conclusion medically that is saying, well, you will not survive. We reverse it in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. Hallelujah. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Okay. Hallelujah. Yeah, we want to just quickly do a reclaimer, a reclaimer here. That disclaimer. yeah, sorry, sorry, a disclaimer here. That please don't go off your medication until your GP says so. I believe God has. By the time we meet you again next time, mm. you, you will have testimony in Jesus' name. When you go for a shepherd, they'll say, ah, what has happened to you? Say, well, it is Jesus. So. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus did it. You know, mm. a couple, they agreed with me online and uh, mm. and, and, it, and it was free also. Mm. The healing was free. <laughs> because God has changed my blood. Mm. God has changed my blood. God has healed me. Mm. I am healthy in the name of Jesus. Amen. So, remain blessed. Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his mind. Like the, 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 the broadcast, share it, you know, let's spread the good news and uh, enjoy God's word and let other people also enjoy the word. So, God bless you. We love you so much. Bye. Bye. Thank you very Thank much. You. Amen.